I invite you to just sit back and relax. Our message this morning is from our beloved Reverend John. And his theme is based on this month, which is Child's Month. So get your notebook out and your pens or pencils because you're going to have homework. <laughs> so please join me in welcoming Reverend John to the podium. Thank you, Reverend Annie. So May is being celebrated as Child Month here in beautiful Jamaica. And the beloved congregant sent me some, some great comments by kids about the ocean. Most of them are too risque, I think, for airplay. But there is one that I wanted to share with you from a little boy called Mikey, who was age seven. He said, and I quote, if you are surrounded by water, you're an island. But if you're not surrounded by the ocean, you're incontinent. <laughs> so good morning, my worldwide spiritual family, and a very special welcome to all of you celebrating another beautiful, sun-drenched Sunday morning with us at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in Jamaica. We're an island. But it doesn't matter whether you are an island or you're in continent. We are ever so happy to have you sharing with us in consciousness. It is just one that we can meet. We know you don't think about it, but there are many countries where people are not free to worship as they wish. And so this for me is a great, great privilege to be able to gather either online or in person and to, to acknowledge the creator the author and the finisher of our lives, God the good, omnipotent, and omniscient, source of all that is. Isaiah, the prophet, foretells a time when the lion and the lamb will feed together. A time when all creation, all nature, will coexist in the harmony and peace God intended. And says Isaiah, and I quote, and a little child shall lead them. End of that scripture. And then in Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 3, we read, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them, and he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. End of that scripture. My friends, Jesus was not, as you know, referring to a geographic location called heaven, but rather to the state of consciousness that results from knowing that we are inextricably bound up with God the God presence and the God power that is in all, through all, over all, all in all, as all. Religious science founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, commenting on the, the passage in Matthew, points out that Jesus understood, quote, that the childlike mind is more receptive to truth than the over-intellectual who demand too rational an explanation of those truths which must be accepted on faith. On page 456 of the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Holmes writes, and I quote, how we long for a return of that simple trust in life which children have. In their minds, there are no doubts. They have not yet been told that they are sinners destitute of divine guidance and spiritual life. The life of the child is lived in natural goodness. End of quote. I will never forget my first visit to the Temple of Life in 1981. First of all, it was most unusual to go into a church and find a lady minister. I mean, that was just 
not politically, the done thing. So that was the first thing that had me, you know, all ears for what this woman was going to say. And my friend Larry Chang, who had invited me, said, John, she's right up your street. She laughs at her own jokes. And she really is just point on with the meaning of our existence and our relationship with God. So I came, I had an open mind. I was a very devout Catholic, um, Anglo-Catholic, um, but I was most interested in hearing her. And that first Sunday, I was just blown away because she, she spoke about sin. I thought I had invented it and I had a, the patent. Um, I thought if, if they mentioned sin, as if they didn't have uh, YouTube in those days, but if, if they had and my name was with it, it would have been okay. YouTube would have uh, accepted you and played the, um, the recording. I really thought I had, the, I had the patent on sin. And then she said, but sin is just an error. I thought, oh, my goodness. And then she explained that it is, it is a term from archery. That when archers aim for the bullseye and they miss the mark, they are said to have sinned. And just bells went off in my mind. I thought, my goodness. So life is natural goodness, the goodness that God created. And what we are doing is we are aiming for that goodness. I am aiming for it. And every now and then, in fact, more often than not, I missed the mark. But wow, all I need do was take aim, as we say in Jamaica, wheel and come again. Take aim and fire again. And when you do that often enough, practice, 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 you know how that goes. You get better and better and better at it. And so I came to the recognition that every day, in fact, every moment of every day, gave me an opportunity to aim again at the goodness that I was learning to believe and to understand were mine by divine right of being. Friends, I'm not exaggerating when I said that for someone who was brought up to believe that I personally had driven the nails into Jesus' hands and pierced his side, that first taste of truth really was an eye-opener for me. And every day I, I thank God. Over all of these 40-odd years, I thank God that I crossed the threshold of this temple of light and began to learn how to take aim and hit that bullseye of God's goodness that is the right of every person, man, woman, and child, that is brought into the world. But I knew I was, a, I was a dancer in my earlier years, and I knew that just as I had to train my body by practicing constantly, rehearsing and memorizing to improve my muscular memory and, and the way my body moved, I had to do the same with my mind. And so I made a decision and a determination that I would diligently attend services Whenever I was in, in Jamaica, I, if I was even out of town, I would drive back to Kingston for, for church on a Sunday. I didn't miss it. And to attend classes because I wanted to have the same kind of mind tone that I had with my body tone as a dancer. And little did I realize that that practice, 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 that spirit had put my feet on a path that would lead me to where I'm standing today, sharing on this Sunday morning with you all. It is truly a blessing. So in addition to being a dancer in my younger years, I also worked with the airlines. And so this story about a little boy in Sunday school really appealed to me. The story goes that the Sunday school teacher asked the, the kids to draw pictures of their favorite Bible story. And she was a little puzzled because little Johnny drew a picture of four people on an airplane. So she said, little Johnny, that's, that's interesting. Uh, what, what Bible story are you, are you illustrating? And he said, the flight to Egypt. <laughs> In that tone of voice children use when they think that we don't have a scrap of common sense. So she said, oh, that's lovely. So that must be Joseph and Mary, 
and there is baby Jesus, but, but who is the fourth person? Oh, said little Johnny, that's Pontius the pilot. <laughs> you gotta love them. Dr. Holmes says, and I quote, we must return the way we came as little children who know that life is good and to be trusted. Little children know that life is good and is to be trusted. And Holmes says we are to approach our problems as though they were not. Approaching them in this manner, they will vanish, unquote. So I have an assignment for you. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is this. First of all, this week, it's a three-part assignment, but very simple. First of all, this week, I want you to dig up a picture of yourself, a photograph of yourself when you were a small child. See if you can find a picture of yourself when you were young. And spend some quiet time this week contemplating that picture and loving the child that you were. You know, many of us didn't feel very loved when we were small. But even if you did have a loving experience as a, as a child, still look for a picture of yourself and you give yourself some of that love because that little child still dwells within each and every one of us. And sometimes that little child feels quite lost because, you know, we come, as the poet said, streaming clouds of glory from God. And then the world teaches us that we are unworthy and sinful and um, like a filthy rag. How could God create something other than that which is beautiful and pure and perfect? But somehow the world leads us to believe that we really are unworthy. So spend some time this week just holding a picture of yourself and recalling that time and loving yourself. So that's the first part of your assignment. Secondly, buy yourself a small toy. It doesn't have to be something expensive. It can be a yo-yo or remember when you were, you were young, you used to play jacks with, with a little ball or a matchbox car or a small doll. Um, buy yourself a small toy and play with your toy for a bit every day during your spiritual um, time as you repeat this affirmation. With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. Can we say that together? With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. In a half voice, with childlike faith. I trust the process of life and experience only good. In a whisper, with childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. And now say it in your heart. And so it is. You feel the energy change as you say it from a loud voice to a half voice to a whisper and then deep within you, you are generating that energy to make that, that thought, that, that truth, take a hold in your, your central nervous system, in your body, in your DNA, and become the essence of your belief system. With childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. Thirdly, I told you there was a three part to your assignment. If you have anything at all to do with children, whether they be grown children or they be, you know, not yet grown up, see if you can go through an entire day without making any judgments or critical statements. Just see if you can spend a whole day in the presence of your children without being critical or judgmental or saying the word no. Hmm, tall order. For many kids, Life too often becomes a litany of do's and don'ts from adults. 
And you know what happens? It results in blocked channels of communication which cause our children to withdraw or feel alienated from the adults around them. Laying off the criticism and finding genuine things to compliment will deepen the bonds of friendship and respect between you and your young people. So one, find yourself a picture of yourself when you were a youth and love yourself for a few moments every day. Keep that picture on your desk or put it on your fridge or somewhere where you see it and you can love yourself whenever you see it. Second, buy yourself a small toy and when you are playing with it, affirm with childlike faith, I trust the process of life and experience only good. And thirdly, lay off the judgment and the criticisms and the shoulds and shouldn'ts and do's and don'ts with your young people and just find things that are positive and uplifting and life-affirming to admire in them. By the way, as we're mentioning our young people, our guest speaker for our May 27th Lifeline presentation on Facebook Live will be our own Temple of Light young adult, Zoe Saunders. And she'll be speaking on the topic, bringing up parents. So make a note in your, in, your, in your calendars. May 27th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know we are going to get some very interesting um, feedback and some, some very energizing ideas about how our young people perhaps perceive and experience us. Looking forward to seeing, seeing Zoe um, on, on that um, presentation. And because it's Child Month, I'd like to tell you an Anansi story. Anansi, for those who are not um, familiar, is an Akan folktale hero who often took the shape of a spider. Anansi made his way from West Africa via the Middle Passage into the hearts of Caribbean children, bringing with him his deep understanding of human nature. So Anansi's stories were part of an exclusively oral tradition, um, and Anansi himself was seen as synonymous with skill and wisdom and a keen wit. He used to use human foibles and you know, human um, tendencies to greed and, and to go down the wrong path um, to great effect as he dealt with people. So the story I'm going to share with you today is called Anansi and Common Sense. Once upon a time, Smaddy tell Breda and Nancy say, common sense in short supply. So Nancy make up his mind, say, him going to collect all the common sense he can find in the world. Him was thinking that he would be the smartest Smaddy in the world if he could just accomplish that. Collect up, collect up, collect up all the common sense he can find. And so Anansi went around, traveling up hill and down dale all over the world, collecting the common sense in a big calabash on a board, board. And he put and the common sense, common sense he would find, find in this big calabash when he went to small, to small villages, villages and big cities, cities to, to, big to big countries and little countries. He went to primary schools and university never find too much common sense about the university but uh, he went to business places big business and small business he went to government offices he went to churches and he went to cathedrals collecting all of the common sense he could lay his hands on he put it in him calabash and then him decide say him want to hide it to a place where only him one can reach it so there was a big guanga tree in our backyard and then decide to climb the guango tree and hide the calabash with the common sense in at the top of it. So he hang the calabash round his neck, hanging on his chest, and start to climb. But of course, the calabash on his chest hindered his progress upwards. So so him climb, so him slip back, so him climb, so him slip back. Or him you know, just crawling, getting more and more frustrated. And then a little girl under the tree look up and say, Morning, Mr. Nancy. Why you don't um, put the calabash upon your back? And then you could have, it would, you could have get up the t to the top of the tree much quicker and much easier. And answer, so what you say, Pickney? 
She said, yes, put the calabash upon your back because you see, when it's upon your chest, it in there you're climbing. So Anansi was vexed because, and say, him think him had got all the common sense in the world and this little picnic show him up. In back, in back, in back, so tell him, fling down the calabash on ground and it bust open and all of the common sense when being collect up fly out all over the world. That is how we find little common sense. Each of we have it today. So I want to say to you, if you're walking around and you're seeing the common sense, pick it up. The reason that children show us up is they're not afraid to pick up things. Then pick up good and then pick up not so good. So they pick up whatever they find. And we need to be sure, my friends, that we use our common sense in dealing with the picnic them because they have it. I'm always amazed at how you can hand them your phone or your tablet or whatever device you're using and say, how you do so and so? And they just go. And then look at you with that expression of, oh dear. You don't really you get it, do you? It seems as if they come into the world now knowing stuff <laughs> that it takes us such a long time to get used to. Anyway, all Anansi stories end with, with a, an interesting phrase, Jack Mandora may not choose none, which means I'm not taking any sides. I'm just giving it to you as I got it. So Jack Mandora may not choose none. Pick up any common sense, you're fine. My friends, from another culture uh, in another time, Khalil Gibran, the Lebanese-American philosopher, artist, poet, and writer, Speaking on children in his immortal work, The Prophet, writes, and I quote, And a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, Speak to us of children. And he said, Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the houses of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not back nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite and he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness. For even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. End of that beautiful piece of, of prose. So my friends, I urge you to think about it. God is the archer and God never misses the mark. Because there is no sin in God. God's goodness is all that there is. And anything unlike that is an invention of the human mind. God is the only thing we have to experience. And you can train yourself to think, not of the things you don't want, but of the things you do want to experience as a child of the infinite as a child of God. In our children, as in all of us, there is a wisdom and a power not of the flesh which springs permanently from the inner life, the all-powerful and all-wise, and it is the wisdom of God. The little child living in you knows all that it needs to know to ace the game of life. May you come to trust the inner power with the simple faith of that little child within you. And may each of you continue to grow in spirit and in truth as you continue 
aiming for the bullseye and hitting the mark. And if you sin, what do you do? Aim and fire again. Journalist Helen Ratner, writing for worldnetdaily.com, notes, and I quote, I have traveled the world over to know this one truth. There is no force of nature as powerful as the joy of a child. Children have the gift of being able to laugh and play through war, economic despair, natural disaster, disease, and hunger. Their magical power to transform their environment has been recorded for thousands of years. For as Isaiah 11:16 prophesied, and a little child shall lead them. Namaste.